You can study in the morning, you can study at night. You can study outside by a campfire light. You can study with the rabbi. So this week, everyone is talking about the Iran deal. How we've compromised, what we're giving, what we're getting. Will the Iranians actually hold up their end of the bargain? Are we giving too much than we're getting? And I've been starting to read all the articles to try and understand this. It's such a complex issue that I certainly can't grasp it all, and I haven't read the entire agreement. But I did read one article by Peter Beinhardt in The Atlantic that really struck me. His essential argument is, is that we're comparing this deal to the ideal, as opposed to comparing this deal to the real alternative. You see, the ideal is not a real alternative. He says that the United States cannot bludgeon Iran into total submission, either economically or militarily. The U.S. tried that in Iraq. And Beinhardt goes on to explain that we have to prioritize. We have to decide what we can accomplish realistically, not ideally, realistically. And we have to also remember our own limitations, that we cannot make all the changes in the world that we want to make. We like to think that we can, and it's unpopular, and some would say unpatriotic, to talk about the limits of American exceptionalism, but we are not omniscient. We are not omnipotent. We have a limited scope of what we can accomplish. And if we've learned anything from the past 13 years, 14 years, it's that using military might isn't always the best weapon that we have. Think about last week's Parsha, Parshat Pinchas. The Parsha starts with God praising Pinchas, saying Pinchas has, has, has um, shown his jealousy, and therefore I don't have to show mine. God, of course, is referring to the fact that, that uh, Pinchas saw an Israelite with a Moabite woman, and they were uh, having a relationship, and, and presumably, according to the text, that would lead the Israelite to worship the Moabite God, and this was happening rapidly in the Israelite community. And when Pinchas saw this one Israelite with this one Moabite woman, he threw a spear right through them. He killed them on the spot. That's force. That's power, right? He solved the problem. Well, it didn't really solve the problem. I mean, God gives him credit for solving the problem, but not really. If we jump ahead to the book of Ruth, this is a very important book. This is the book that tells us the lineage of King David. If we jump to the book of Ruth, we see that Elimelech, Noam's, Naomi's husband, died. She was left with her two sons, and they married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other named Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite woman. Now, this isn't to suggest that, that the, all the Moabite women were terrible in leading the Israelites astray, but if the goal of, of Pinchas's actions were to stop intermarrying with Moabite women, that use of force didn't really work. In the moment, it worked, but long-term, it didn't. And I wonder if part of what we have to consider here isn't what Beinhardt is suggesting, that with all of the power that we imagine ourselves having, we cannot accomplish the perfect goal. We cannot reach the ideal with Iran, both because of our own limitations and, most importantly, because of theirs. And so the question before us is not comparing the deal that we have, the agreement that we have, to what we really, really want, the ideal, but comparing it to the true alternative, to the reality that's on the ground. If Congress can ask those difficult questions and challenge this agreement on that level, rather than the, the inconceivable ideal, then perhaps we'll be able to make this agreement even stronger and really make a difference in our world. Let's talk some Torah. It's okay as you will see that we're bound to disagree. Don't have to see eye to eye to make the Torah come alive. Now that I've had my say, let's not waste the whole day.